Hi everyone, welcome to Right to the Top, I'm Adam. In today's video, I'm going to talk to you about letter writing, how to write a letter. And this is especially targeting those people who are going to take the IELTS general test and you're going to be doing task one, which asks you to write a letter. So what I'm going to do today is give you five tips, five important tips on how to get a higher score on the letter. And the reason I'm doing this is because people don't generally spend enough time working on their letter writing. Everybody concentrates on the essay very much. So you, sir, some of the mistakes that I see with these letters are very similar. So I'm going to talk to you about the more common of these and how to fix them. So very, very important. Let's start with tip number one. Be aware of the necessary tone. It's very important to understand the type of letter you're going to be writing on the IELTS exam. And this is going to be based on the relationship you have with the person receiving the letter, okay? Or the topic or the purpose of the letter. But usually these go hand in hand. You're going to have, to a, in a formal letter, for example, you're going to be writing about a very serious topic to a person you probably have a very professional relationship with. So look at the tones. There are three of them, sorry, three of them. Formal, semi-formal, informal. And we're going to look at each one a little bit uh, separately. Formal. And keep in mind, this is part of your task achievement score. They want to make sure you understand the situation you're in. In a formal letter, you're going to be conducting, you're going to be writing to a person who has a much higher position than you, for example, in business or even in society. It basically means you have very little contact with this person. You're essentially strangers. The only time you ever speak to this person is when you have to do, discuss something professional, like you're the president of your company, your doctor, etc. You're not friends, you don't have any relationship other than this professional relationship. So very high position or complete stranger. Use an honorific, Mr., Miss, Doctor, whatever the person is, and their full name. Dear Mr. John Smith, very formal, okay? if you know the person's name. If you don't know the person's name, write sir or madam or to whom it may concern. Now, to whom it may concern, this is when you're writing a letter to a company. You're not writing to any specific person. You're not writing to any position. You're writing the letter to the company or the organization. When you write sir or madam, you're targeting the head of the HR department or the head of the neurology department at the hospital. You're targeting a specific position, sir, madam. You're targeting an, a, an, a whole organization. You don't know who will be receiving it, to whom it may concern. Another situation is if you're writing a cold letter. Now, a cold letter is when you're trying to make contact for the first time with someone. We also say a cold call if you're uh, making a phone call to do this. So a cold letter, you don't know the person, you're just trying to warm up the relationship, trying to introduce yourself. If, for example, if you're applying for a job, if you're requesting information from someone or a, or a group, or if you want the group to take some action, if you want to complain or praise a company or a person, if you want to give them some information, let them know something, all of these things. So you have a very specific person, you don't know the person or the company on the other end, the recipient. Okay, and make sure you have a very formal closing, yours faithfully, sincerely, etc. Keep it formal. Okay, so let's look at semi-formal. So semi-formal is closer to formal than it is to informal. Let's keep that in mind first. Basically, you know this person you're writing to. Okay, you're friendly with this person, but you're not friends with this person. So, for example, your boss. You see your boss every day. You joke around, you have some fun, but you still have a very professional relationship. You don't go out for beers after work. You don't invite this person to your house. You don't hang out on the weekends. You see each other at work, but you have a friendly relationship. Same with a colleague at the office, your landlord, the person who rents you your apartment or house. You probably speak to them regularly, but you're not friends with this person. Teacher, doctor, again, keeping it professional, but seeing this person on a regular basis. So this person, again, in Western cultures, you will be on first name, uh, you will have a first name relationship with this person. If you're writing from a culture that this doesn't happen, and you, you still use uh, family names, 
that's fine. Use only the family name, not the full name. That's too formal. Now, if you, again, if you have a good relationship with this person, you see them every day, you can use their first name, Dear John. If the relationship is a little bit new, like you have a new boss, a new colleague, and you haven't established a good, friendly relationship yet, keep it a little bit more formal. Dear Mr. Smith, okay? But again, don't put the full name. You don't need it. One first name, if it's friendly, only last name if it's a bit more formal. The topics will probably be the same as the formal ones. You're, you're doing something a little bit more professional. Again, you're not friends. You have a professional relationship. Keep it that way. Do not write sir, madam, or to whom it may concern because you know this person. You have met. You have seen each other regularly. You might not be friends, but you're not strangers. There's no need to be overly formal. And you definitely don't want to say to whom it may concern because you know who it concerns. You know the person's name. So you, there's no need to use that uh, opening. Again, best regards. Thank you. You can use yours faithfully, yours sincerely. A little bit overly formal. Again, depends on the context. If you're writing a letter telling your boss you're quitting, then yeah, yours faithfully is fine because even though you're quitting, you're still faithful to your boss. Otherwise, best regards, thank you in most situations. I'll make a separate video about openings and closings because they can be a little bit uh, tricky depending on the context. Informal. Now, when you're writing an informal letter, nine out of 10 times, this will be to your friend. You know this person, you're very friendly, you see each other all the time, you have a very casual relationship. First name only, okay? And friendly, like you can make jokes with each other. So you don't need to be formal in the letter either. You can have a very close acquaintance, somebody you know very well. You're not friends, but you're definitely close enough that you can be comfortable around each other. You don't have to be formal. Your neighbor, you see your neighbor every day. Again, maybe you don't spend time together on the weekends, but every morning you say, hey, good morning, how are you, and things like that. How's the cat, whatever the situation. Classmate, again, up to you. If I, if I take a class, I usually make friends with my classmates. Even though we might not go out much together, we'll still joke around in the classroom because we see each other every day. So that's kind of an informal situation as well. Uh, age may matter. You may have a classmate who's much older than you. You may have to be a little bit uh, respectful, so that's a bit semi-formal. Uh, but again, they're not going to give you too specific of these things on the test. First name. Okay, you don't need the family name. Dear is optional, but you can say, hey, John, or John, comma. Again, the test makers will often give you the beginning, like start your letter with dear John. But if they don't, you can just go straight for the name. You can say, hey do whatever you want, do not get overly formal with it, only first name. Uh, dear is optional, but recommended. Why? Again, if you're not sure what's going on, just put dear for basically all three uh, tone levels. And casual closing. Don't say yours faithfully to your friend. Your friend knows you're faithful, that's why you're friends. See you, talk to you soon, take care, bye-bye. Okay, so those are the tones. Now, introduction. And this is where a lot of people lose points because they, they spend too much time thinking about it. Your introduction should be very short and simple and to the point. Formal and semi, get straight to the point. I'm writing to complain. I'm writing to apply for a job. I'm writing to inform you. Tell the reader exactly why you're uh, contacting them because this person is busy. He's not going to read. He's reading letters all day. He doesn't want to get too much information. He wants to know exactly if he should spend his or her time reading your letter. And for formal and semi-formal, we'll get to the point. Informal, start with a little bit of banter. Banter means like small talk, light talk. Hey, John, how are you? Long time no see. I wanted to ask you, and then get into your details, right? A little bit of fun, because you're friends. You're not, friends are not too serious. And then, why are you writing the letter? But always, in all types of letters, let the person know in the introduction why you are writing to them to him or her. Do not get into details, okay? This is very important. Some people start giving me details right in the introduction. Introduction, why are you writing? That's it. Second uh, paragraph, like the body, if you want to call it, is your uh, details, right? Now, here's an example of what not to do. 
So this person, okay, you are studying a short course in another country. Your accommodation was arranged by the course provider. There's a major problem with the accommodation. Write a letter to the provider, and in your letter you should blah, blah, blah. I'm, I don't want to get into the details. I want to show you something. First of all, this is way too long. The entire letter is 242 words. Way too long. <clears throat> your minimum is 150. Your maximum should be 200. If you haven't answered all the task details, by the time you reach 200 words, then you've written a bad letter. 150 is enough, actually. Aim for 175 to 200. Do not go over 200 words. You're writing too much. Now, another problem. To whom it may concern. Your accommodation was by the course, arranged by the course provider. You, you're going to another country to take a course. You're arranging housing. You've spoken to someone many times before the, this, because, again, you want to make sure you're going to another country and have a place to live. You know who you've spoken to. This does not apply. You, you've, you've, you've had contact with this person before. Dear Mr. Smith, boom. You've had enough contact. You don't need the full name. It's a bit of a semi-formal situation. Dear Mr. Smith, and then get into your idea. Here, too much information here. OK, my name is so. Well, yeah, this person knows your name. It's on the letter. I will be taking a three-month German language course. This person knows all this stuff. You've already arranged all this stuff before you went to the new country. Too much information here. Dear Mr. X, I'm writing you regarding my accommodations at Hill University. Unfortunately, I have not been assigned the room type I had opted for before the course. Boom. Here, I'm, I'm writing about the accommodations. I'm not, I didn't get the room that I was supposed to get. That's it. Details to follow, OK? Tip number three, and this is very, very important, OK? The letter is not an essay. And as I mentioned before, people spend a lot more time preparing for the essay and very little time preparing for the letter. The problem is that quite often, people take the tools they've harnessed, the tools they've collected for the essay, and apply it to the letter. And they're going to lose points for doing that. So some of these are. Do not overwrite. In the, in the essay, you want to you know, get a little bit over 300 words. You're writing longer pieces. That's fine. In the essay, it's much simpler. Keep it under 200 words. 155 should be enough. But just in case you have some fillers, some unnecessary things, repetitions, aim for 175 to make sure you get all the information in there. More is too much. Avoid academic language. This is a letter. Even if it's a formal letter, it's not an essay. You're not using, it's not academia. You're not in university. Do not write using academic language. Use the word reduce. Don't use the word mitigate in a letter. Use the word combine. Don't use the word amalgamate. These are academic letters. You don't need them. Mitigate in some contexts can be OK, but probably not a context you will see on the test. In the informal letter, you can use slang, but be very, very careful about it, because if you're not 100% sure what the slang means, you could make a big mistake and have a miscommunication. Okay? Make sure you know the meaning. And even if you do, don't use too much slang. Even with a best friend, just keep it a little bit not too bad. Make sure you know the meanings of the slang you're using. You don't need transitions to get to the new paragraphs. Okay. Paragraph one, here's why I'm writing. Paragraph two, here are the details. Paragraph three, here's what I want you to do. There's no, like, you're not, fo uh, you're not following an argument to a conclusion. You're just giving information. That's all it is. Do not use transitions, unless appropriate for the context. So here's the problem. Here's the details. With all of this in mind, here's what I want you to do. In that case, this transition is fine, but I'm not using it as a transition to flow to a conclusion. I'm just telling you, think about this when I tell you this is the action I want you to take. Don't use in contrast. On the other hand, hence, all of these are for the essay. Keep them out of the letter. Make sure you don't have a conclusion. Again, you're not reaching any conclusion. But do make sure you have a call to action to end your letter. And I'm going to talk about, uh, about that in a moment. OK, so just a bit of a refresher. but. 
keep in mind that your organization should, should be a certain way. Have at least three paragraphs. If you have anything less, something is missing or your cohesion is, uh, and coherence is a little bit off. Have your opening, dear somebody, your intro, why are you writing, body two, the details, based on what they want you to do in the task. Body three, next steps, what they want you to do in the task again. You're gonna have three bullet points. Generally, you, you're gonna, they're gonna tell you, write the, le the company to do whatever. Tell them what happened, where it happened, what you want them to do. That's the general idea of this uh, task. But make sure you, each grouping of information has its own paragraph. Closing and then your salutation, like your, yours faithfully, best regards, etc. Closing, I'm gonna to talk to you about in a second as well. You wanna make sure it's a little bit of a separate thing by itself as its own paragraph. This is very, very important, and a lot of people do not do this, okay? In the end, you want to address the reader directly. You want to tell the reader what is going to happen after they finish reading the letter. Now, do you want them to take some sort of action? Do you want them to give you a refund or compensation or send somebody to fix something? Do you want them to call you? Do you want them to contact you? Do you, do you want them to do something? If so, tell them what you want them to do and tell them how you want them to do it. Do you want them to give you an answer? Tell them that. Do you want them to wait for you to contact them again? Tell them that, etc. Whatever is gonna happen after the letter, let the person know what that is, okay? And then I'll show you in an example how to close your, uh, your letter. So you, we're gonna look at an example. You took a trip by a bus. I'm gonna show you a student sample. This is from an actual test taker. You took a long uh, bus trip. Your suitcase was damaged, write the bus company. Tell them when and where you traveled, what happened. Describe your suitcase and what happened to it and what, uh, why you think the company should pay. So here, you're gonna tell them why you're writing. You're gonna give them the details of when, where, and your suitcase will be one paragraph, and why you think the company should pay. First of all, tell them that they should pay, and then tell them why they should pay, okay? So here's the original letter I saw, and right away this person lost points. Even before I started reading, I understood that the cohesion and coherence score uh, is going to be low because some, he missed something, this person. This is one paragraph. So I have your opening, introduction, one paragraph, closing, and salutation. Right away, there's a problem. He didn't separate the information into categories that they need to be in, okay? I rewrote it. Introduction, paragraph one, paragraph two, closing, and uh, salutation. Now, another thing, if you read this whole thing, this person did not describe the suitcase anywhere. Right away, lost points, you didn't get one of the bullets. All I had to do was add, well, let's say, an average size blue hard shell Samsonite. One, two, three, four, five, six words I added, and I've answered that bullet point. I have when, where, the type of uh, uh, suitcase, what happened to it all the details in one paragraph. Next paragraph, I wanna tell them what they need to do and how they're gonna do it. I can't use it anymore. It happened while your staff was looking at it. I think you should pay me back the replacement cost. You, you may credit this to my credit card or contact me directly to make other arrangements. I want you to pay me back. Do it on my credit card or contact me and I'll tell you how else you can pay me. And then the closing. Thank you for your quick attention to this matter. Tell them at the end what is going to happen. Like, I, I hope you're gonna be doing this quickly and I look forward to hearing from you. I look forward to hearing from you because you told them to contact you or to do something. If you're not expecting an answer, then there's nothing to look forward to. Make sure that your closing matches your call to action, okay? And then, close it and you're on your way. This whole letter is about 197, 198 words. So I'm under the 200. I have all the details, nice sentences, some nice vocab, high score uh, for my letter, okay? And that's essentially all there is to it. Again, practice. Don't forget that task one is worth about 33% of your score. 
don't neglect it. Practice writing letters, but also, of course, practice uh, essay writing, because that's the bigger part of it. If you have any questions about this, please ask me in the YouTube comment section. Uh, if you like the video, give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and come back next time for uh, more useful tips on IELTS and TOEFL. See you then. Bye-bye.